Es ist Spargelzeit! <laughs> Today, I'm going to be making Spargel for the first time with you. Weisser Spargel, of course. That is white asparagus. Germans are crazy about it, and I wanted to try making it for the first time at home. And I'm going to talk about why Germans love white asparagus and how it's grown. So hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Sarah of the McFall family. Kevin is going to be joining me later to try the spargel that I'm gonna make. But we are a family of six with four kids, a cat and a hamster who moved from America to Germany in February of 2021. And we've been sharing our culture shocks and adventures and holidays and everything with you along the way. So today we're gonna to try one of German's favorite specialties. And I said specialties. Specialty, Spe special, I can't speak English anymore. S -s Specialties, yeah. Special, <laughs> I can't say it. Spe Specialties, um, which is white spargel or, or weisser spargel. Again, it is white asparagus and Germans love this stuff. I, I had never seen white asparagus before in my life until we started watching cultural videos on YouTube about Germany before moving here. So from the articles I was reading, Germans love to get their white asparagus from local farmer's market stands. And this is apparently one produce that they don't mind spending a little extra money for. And they do believe the best spargel comes from Germany and is grown by the local farmers. So guys, tell me in the comments below, is that true for you? Um, of course, at these farmer market stands, they can be quite expensive. So I understand if you wanna get it from the supermarket where you save some money. But I was able to get some from the local farmer's market. I was on my way to get my hair cut and I was driving through the farms and countryside to get to the hair salon. It's like a 15 minute bike ride for me. And I saw, ah, oh, it says Spargel and I wanted to buy some. Thankfully I had enough money. So I got mine from a local farmer stand. These farmer stands are so cool in Germany. If you don't already know about them, uh, they're on the honor system and you have to put money into a little casa, which is like a cash box, basically. You put your money in there and you take it. Now this particular farmer did have signs that said that they're a security camera. So sadly, maybe they're dealing with some theft. I don't know. But I've heard, you know, online and read in articles that in most all of Germany, it's the honor system. And so these farmer stands, they start now and they go all the way through August and they will sell blueberries, tomatoes, strawberries. It's so cool. You just drive to your local farmer's market or walk or ride your bicycle and get some fresh produce right from your local farmer. It's, I just love it. It's so charming and so good for, you know, the environment and sustainability and so fresher and healthier because it's not being imported from some far off place, you know? So Germans, I would love for you to tell us in the comments below why Spargel is so special to you. Or if it isn't special to you, let us know in the comments below. Um, I was reading that for many, it's a, it just reminds them of spring and summer and it's a tradition that they had growing up. So it reminds them of their childhood, maybe their omas and their opas and uh, just very warm, cozy memories for many people. Yeah, so here is the box of asparagus that I got from the farmer's market. And something you need to know about spargel is that it is grown underground and that is how it doesn't turn green. The chlorophyll process doesn't happen. It doesn't react with the sun. It is grown underground in the dirt. And for that reason, it's very tough, but it also is more tender. Um, I was reading that Germans believe that spargel is so special because it's more like meat, like a really soft meat. Even some say it has a consistency of lobster meat. So uh, I'm excited to see if I can make it taste like that. So green asparagus is grown above the ground, white below the ground. So the harvesting of the spargel is actually way more labor intensive than the green spargel because they have to dig it out from under the ground and it's still in large part done by hand and not a lot of machines. So that's why it's more expensive and sort of this like delicacy, this special thing among Germans. At least that's what I was reading. So you guys let me know in the comments below if that is true for you. So of course, 
Americans see this and they have one thought. Sorry, I had to bring that up. I know, so cliche. Y'all are probably tired of hearing that, but yeah, it's pretty much the most phallic vegetable that exists and it's pretty funny. So because this is grown underground, the skin is very tough. So you must, I was, I was learning from some YouTube videos that you must peel it a lot. And when you think you've peeled it enough, keep peeling it more. So again, let me know guys in the comments below, how much should I peel it? How do I know when it's done being peeled? Because I definitely have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to that. So I asked on Instagram, give me your favorite spargel recipes. And one guy gave me this recipe from Chef Koch. It's just spargel mit hollandaise sauce, schinken und kartoffeln. So that's asparagus with hollandaise sauce, ham and potatoes. It's the traditional simple way. And that's what I wanted. So you can buy this hollandaise sauce at any supermarket if you'd rather not make it yourself, which I totally understand. But I knew I would get creamed in the comments. Creamed, haha. <laughs> You like my joke? Hollandaise sauce is a cream. <laughs> yeah, I'll be I'll be here all week. But I knew I would get creamed in the comments if I tried to buy hollandaise sauce instead of making myself. So I'm gonna try to make it myself. I don't know if it'll be very good or if I'll do it right, but I'm gonna try. So the Ukrainian family is still with us. Uh, they have been here for two months. It's a Ukrainian refugee family. They're absolutely wonderful. We really adore them. Uh, they cook many Ukrainian dishes for us, Kazakhstanian dishes, because the dad is from Kazakhstan originally. And um, wow, they've blessed us as much as we're helping them. They're also helping us. And we're really trying to help them look for housing now. That's been hard for them. They're really ready to have their own house, you know, have their own community, have their own friends. They want to start their lives here, uh, but housing is quite scarce. So it's been hard for them to find housing. So anyway, that's the little update on them. So if you guys have housing tips for us, let us know in the comments below, or if you are a realtor or know realtors or know someone who can help us, you know, talk to these landlords and apply and all of that, we would greatly appreciate your help. So I mentioned them because that means we still have 10 people to cook for every night. <laughs> so this recipe I'm going to be making today is huge. You're not going to need to make this much. Uh, you know, if you have two or four people in your house. So for our recipe, we need two to two and a half kilograms of spargel. So I have two kilograms. I just couldn't bring myself to buy two and a half. I don't know. So I have this and we have lemons and shinken. Um, the recipe calls for that. And I actually got some prosciutto, different kinds of cured meats. Many of you said on Instagram that you like to eat your spargel with schnitzel. My kids love schnitzel. So I definitely bought some schnitzel so I know the kids will be happy. And then you have boiled potatoes. You wash them and peel them and boil them. And I'm gonna put some herbs and butter on them too to make them really tasty. So that's what we're gonna be making today. Come along for the ride and tell me, give me tips along the way. I, I'm sure you'll have your own opinions and ideas. So let's get started. Los geets. Okay, so while I'm peeling a million potatoes and a million pieces of spargle, uh, one thing I would say is if you have a big crowd to feed with this, maybe grab a friend and help them and get them to help you peel because this is the longest part. So last year when Kevin and I moved here, you know, it was in COVID lockdown, all the restaurants were closed. And then in the springtime, all the restaurants started opening and we knew spargle was a big deal. So we were really excited to try it in the restaurants. And we did try it when we went to visit Berghausen. It's the longest castle in the world, uh, a kilometer long. And we tried it there and I got spargel creme. Do you say creme? I need to look that up. I don't know. Crema or creme. I mean, in French, you would say creme. Creme de la creme. Spargel creme soup. Spargel cream soup. If you love my really old fashioned kitchen back there, this kitchen is straight out of like 1980. I don't know. You know, in many German apartments and houses, there is no kitchen when you move in. You have to bring your own. And in this case, I wish we had been allowed to bring our own. And we need to talk to our landlords about it because <laughs> we really do not like this kitchen. But it's also like a lot of money that you have to put into it, into a house that 
I'm not gonna own, you know? So we've lived with it for now because we had plenty to take care of this first year. And now we've got a refugee family living with us and we're, you know, today, right, actually right now, they're in the next town getting their Aufenhalts, Aufenhaltsstitel, their residence permits. So yay, that's, that's a really big deal. So we've had enough to take care of, so we haven't thought about the kitchen, but it's very functional. There's a lot of storage base, and but the, the fridge is really tiny, and I don't like that. Oh my gosh, do you know how hard it is <laughs> with 10 people to work with a tiny fridge? It's tough. That's tough. So I'm gonna turn this off and spend another 10 minutes peeling everything, and then I'll wrap back around with you. reading was to drink white wine, a dry white wine with your spargel meal. And I bought these just at our local supermarket, but I made sure to get German wines. And this is a Trocken Elbling, Elbling wine from Moselland. And this is a Trocken Riesling, so a dry Riesling, which is not going to be as sweet. I've had a lot of dry Rieslings and I really like them because sometimes Rieslings, sorry Germans, <laughs> they can be a little too sweet for me sometimes. I mean, they're really yummy. I would say they're great, like kind of like a dessert wine almost, but oh guys, you guys are probably going to blast me in the comments. Be nice, be nice, okay? Yeah, but Riesling's a little sweet for me though I still like it. But I don't really like to drink it with a meal, but I like but I like the Trocken Riesling, so. And this one is from Moselland also, so. So here's something interesting. They say better quality from the farmer's market than the supermarket. Check this out. Farmer's market, supermarket. Huge difference. Still peeling over here. I had seen in a video that you can use the Spargel shavings for Spargel tea cream soup, which sounds like a good idea to me. And then you're not wasting anything, which is really cool. I saw in another recipe that you can use the water that you boil the spargel in to, to make spargel cream soup. So that sounded like another good idea. We're peeling the last one. So another question I had is in the US, with the green asparagus, we pop off the end. It sort of just naturally has a popping off point with that end that's really tough and not good to eat. But when I did that with the white asparagus, it seemed like it was too much. So do you guys just sort of cut the end with a knife or do you pop it off? Let me know. For the hollandaise sauce, it says you need six egg yolks. So I'm going to split them up in here like you would egg whites, but get rid of all the white. So all I have left is yolk. Is that how this is done? I'm guessing it is. Now we need 313 grams of butter. And now we 
we need two and a half tablespoons of lemon juice. And I don't have a juicer, so I'm just gonna have to hand squeeze this as best as I can. So the instructions say to whisk my egg yolks, but you don't want them to curdle. says to do it until a nice, nice frothy juice is formed. So that, that looks good. And then it says to add the melted butter by the spoonful and stirring it every time to make sure it's combined. This will take a while. <laughs> okay guys, while the food is cooking and I'm editing the video, editor Sarah, is popping in <laughs> to tell you about today's sponsor, which is Lingoda. Many of you probably already know them because I've talked about them many times before on this channel because I genuinely use them and love them and have been for the past year and a half. And I can tell you with each and every class, I get more and more confident and I speak better and understand more. In fact, I'm so excited to tell you guys, I have finally completed the first section of the German school, which is A1.1. That's 50 classes. I finished those a few weeks ago. I've already moved on to A1.2 and I've got 50 classes in that section. So to get to A2, you have 100 classes in total and it's the same to go from A2 to B1, 100 more classes. So I've still got a little ways to go to get to A2, but I'm gonna keep at this. I mean, we plan to live in Germany a long time, so I'm gonna keep going. I don't know until C1, uh, I don't know, but I, I plan to continue until I know German <laughs> and know it well. And until Germans can understand me because uh, that's sometimes the issue. What sets Lingoda apart is they are an online language school. They have classes of five people or less. So it's very small, which I love because you get that personal instruction. The teachers are really good at helping to correct you when you mispronounce things or completely botch your sentence and are not even understandable. They will very nicely correct you. It's a live Zoom class with only native speakers in the target language you're trying to learn. So that's always good. You hear how the pronunciation and the rhythm and the cadence is supposed to sound. You can pick from classes 24 seven. You can go really fast. You could do several classes a day if you wanted to, or you can do the slow and steady method like what I'm doing because with four kids, a cat and a hamster, a YouTube channel and a Ukrainian family in our home, I just don't have a lot of extra time. So the slow and steady method works very well for this season of life I'm in right now. And I'm really grateful for that that I can continue learning, but I don't get overwhelmed by it with all the other things going on in my life. So, so if you have a language you're wanting to learn, or maybe you're wanting to improve your English, Lingoda has given you a discount code through my link. It's going to be in the description box below. You can use my code Sarah May, and you're going to get 30% off the first payment of the subscription of your choice. There's several different options. So you get 30% off. If you're not quite ready to commit and you want to try it out first, they do have a seven day free trial, which I think is awesome, where you can take three classes or one private class during that time and see if Lingoda Goda is right for you. So make sure to use my code or my link to get those discounts. Again, they're in the description box below. All right, guys, so let's get back to cooking. Are you getting hungry yet? I'm hungry while I'm editing this video. I'm like, I've got to go back to the store and get more spargel and more kartoffeln. So let's get back to cooking and see if Kevin and I even liked it. Did I cook it correctly? Did I cook it well? I was worried the hollandaise sauce might not be all that great. You're going to find out. So let's get on with the rest of the video. So now we're going to season it with a little salt and pepper and lemon juice. Let's get our lemon juice. The potatoes are coming along really well back there. They'll probably be done soon. Okay, now that the water is boiling, we can put in our asparagus without burning myself here. I saw in a video that you want them to be able to lay flat, so you need a big pot. And that you cook them about seven minutes. 
or until al dente, and they should still have a form. So we're gonna see if we can do that. And they say that you actually need some sugar. setting a timer for seven minutes, and then we'll take them out. He's here with me. Right. I think I've been cooking for an hour and a half, two <laughs> hours. Does it usually take this long? It doesn't, but it's because I was filming and moving cameras around and peeling. I spent so much time peeling the potatoes and the asparagus. <laughs> a ton. I didn't know you peeled <laughs> asparagus. Yes, okay. that's part of the video. You're gonna have to go back and watch it. I will, indeed. Okay, so we have two different wines. The ones that, well, that I told, they're the ones that I told you about earlier. Kevin's got the... Elbing. Elbing, and I've got the Trocken Riesling. So which one do you want? I don't care. I don't think I've ever had an Elbling, so I'll try that one. Yeah, I had that one while I was cooking, and it was very <laughs> flavorful. Really nice. All right, I'll have this one since you're having that one. Okay. It's our first Spargel at home. Yeah. You're supposed to, um, hopefully they're not tough. That, that's, whoops. That's one of the things. Okay, let's dig in. Let's okay. see what we think. Now, I have to say, I've, we've had Hollandaise sauce before, but this has to be the best one. Mmm. Mmm. Very good. I it's like nice it. and crunchy. It's not not too cooked. I like it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I did it al dente. Yeah. And what about the hollandaise sauce? Isn't it By delicious? By the tooth. Such a strange way. By the tooth. Oh. Al dente. Dente. I never thought about that before. Oh it's my gosh. It's a very gosh. nice sauce. I love it. It's very good. Yeah. Thumbs up. Thumbs up, Germany. <laughs> I, I can't get my fork in. We don't, for whatever reason, we don't eat potatoes very often, but I very much like boiled potatoes. Our kids don't really like them. It's all right. Now I overcooked the potatoes. They're almost turning into mashed potatoes. Yeah, it's okay. And then you can add a piece of prosciutto. And I can't remember the other kind of meat I had. Schinken. It's both prosciuttos. Mm. The sauce? Yeah, the sauce is very good. The sauce just finishes it off. So the kids will most likely just be having, they may have a piece of asparagus. The older boys will probably try it. Yeah, I mean, they like regular greens asparagus that we usually make. Mm -hmm. They eat that a fair amount. I wouldn't say it's too tough at all. No, not I at all. I think I, no, yours is not? No, it's perfect. Okay, so I... I peeled it enough. Yeah, so the skin on the outside can be tough because, well, it is tough because they're grown underground and that's how they stay white right. because there's no chlorophyll huh. reaction. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I should try it with the wine. See? That's true. I didn't try the wine. I've been so focused on the food. It's so good and I've been mm. hungry. 
So this is cool because last year, like I said at the beginning of the video, um, we were just learning and doing so much and I just couldn't wrap my head around this dish and how to make it. I was trying to learn so many other dishes like sh like schnitzel and um, I don't know, so Kaser many other schnitzel. things. Yeah, spatula, schnitzel and, and just like getting integrated into Germany. It was a lot. So I just, I couldn't wrap my head around this last year and I thought I'm gonna do that next year. So now things are much more calm much more settled and uh now we have our official first spargel zeit this <laughs> is really nice and uh i'm glad we get to participate in this with you this year so i hope you enjoyed this video guys and let you know you can give me tips on how to cook it better next time in the comments below as long as you're nice <laughs> if you start off your comment with uh that's the worst cooking of a Spargle I've ever seen in my life, then uh, <laughs> delete. I won't even listen to you. You must be nice. I have to delete rude comments every now and then. Every YouTuber does. So be nice, okay? Be nice. Um, so anyway, hope you have a great rest of your week. Thank you for watching our video and go enjoy some Spargle. Cheers. Cheers.